Last time on Master Chef Canada, a luxury ingredient truffles inspired Cody to give up his mystery box advantage, resulting in a dish. It's a bit of a train wreck. That almost sent him home. But other home cooks had better results. It's incredible. I want to devour that whole dish. Ultimately, it was Kevin. This dish does not do you justice. Whose Master Chef Canada journey came to an end. Tonight. The top 12 face a team challenge. We need fries, people! That demands taste. This is the best gravy I've ever tasted in my life. It's delicious, it's incredible. And sales technique. <laughs> Come on, bro. Do you guys like steak? Let me show this kid how it's done. Bacon! It's a crisp day in picturesque Guelph, Ontario, a destination for food and wine lovers and home to one of the country's most prestigious universities. It's here that the top 12 will face their next team challenge. The stakes are getting really, really high right now. It's so close, I can touch it, I can feel it, I can smell it. It's a team challenge. I'm excited, this is what I do. I've been on teams my whole life. I was a football player. This is where I shine. In fact, I still have nightmares about having to go back to school. So being here on a campus, a little bit of anxiety kind of creeping in. Hello and welcome to Guelph, Ontario, a hotbed of culinary innovation. It's here that you're about to face your most grueling team challenge yet. You're standing in front of the University of Guelph's Ontario Agricultural College. The students who attend this college are being groomed to become global leaders in the agriculture food sciences. In fact, some of the world's most delicious foods were first developed on this school's farmland. But the food that this university is most famous for is... Yukon Go Potatoes. This humble potato is the main ingredient in another uniquely Canadian invention. Poutine. Yeah, baby. I feel really confident because we're making poutine. And as a Montrealer, poutine is Quebecois' number one three o'clock in the morning food. As you know, poutine is a sinfully delicious combination of golden french fries, gooey cheese curds, and perfectly seasoned gravy. Right now, poutine is taking the world by storm and can be found on the menus of some of the world's top eateries, where chefs are elevating it to decadent new levels. And as you might have guessed, we want you to do the same. In just one hour, this lawn is going to be teeming with hundreds of hungry students. It will be each team's job to woo them with your own unique takes on a classic poutine, one that looks and tastes worthy of MasterChef Canada. David. Yes, Chef. You had the best dish in the last elimination challenge, so you will be our first team captain. Sabrina, as a runner-up, you're the other team captain. Yes, Chef. I lost the last team challenge. I'm so happy to not be team captain today because I just have to worry about feeding these students. This challenge is gonna work a little different. That's because today, there will be three teams. Wowzers. And the person who has the advantage of choosing who that captain will be is... David. Wow. <laughs> David has another advantage. I like to compete, and I'm going to compete against another French Canadian, Lynn. I am not in the mindset at all to be a team captain today. This is gonna be hilarious. Lynn, a captain again? She already had one meltdown. I think it's a good pick by David. The three poutine stands have been assigned a different color. Red, blue, and green. Each one is equipped with its own specialty pantry that features a different top quality protein. For the red stand, it's pork. For the blue stand, it's beef. And for the green stand, it's chicken. And you, David, have the advantage of getting to decide which team works with which protein. Oh. So, David, which color pantry do you choose? I love pork, so I'm gonna go with pork for myself. Pork is definitely my product. I grow two pigs a year, and we process them right from beginning to end, make sausages, do everything. David, which protein have you decided Sabrina will be cooking with? I choose beef. I have to work with beef, which I'm pretty excited because chicken is boring. Lynn, that means you'll be the leader of the green team and you'll be cooking with chicken. That's the ingredient that I wanted to work with, but David doesn't know that. He's actually setting me up for success right now. It's 
now time to start choosing your teams. I want to avoid Lynn's team, like to play. I do not want to be on there when she's freaking out, waving her knife at bees. David, you get first pick. My first choice is Fast in the Kitchen, Andrew. Thanks, buddy. Sabrina, who's your first pick? Considering I'm working with Beef, John, come on. Yeah! I look good in blue. Lynn, who's your first pick? Probably nobody wants to be on my team because I lost last time. My first pick was my second in command at my last challenge, Tammy. I think this time around, Lynn is going to let go of the reins and she's going to allow other cooks to do what they're good at. And I know we're going to kill it. Christopher. Cody, come on. All right, Cody! I'm choosing Kristen. So, David, who's your third and final pick? I'm just praying I don't get picked last. I was a cool kid in high school, never got picked last, can't start now. I pick Michael. Woo! Guaranteed, I'm getting picked last again. Quasi, Jennifer, you're the bottom two again. Why do you think that is, Jennifer? Welcome to high school. When it came down to the social game of high school, I really struggled with that, because I felt like I was bullied a lot. Quasi, why do you think you're standing here? My fellow home cooks, they don't really know my cooking style. I have yet to, to blossom in this competition. So Sabrina, who do you choose? The last time I worked with Jennifer, she was an emotional wreck. I'm gonna take on Quasi and let Lynn take Jen like she did last time. Yeah, so. buddy! <laughs> yeah, buddy. I am so happy I am not on Sabrina's team. If there is one person in this competition that really makes me feel like I'm back in high school, it's Sabrina. You now have one hour to prep and cook before your poutine stands are open for business. You will then have one hour to serve. The team that attracts the crowds and sells the most orders of poutine will win this challenge. The other two teams will face the dreaded pressure test that will result in at least one home cook going home. Are you ready? Yes, sir! Grab your potatoes because your time starts now! Hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh, okay. Each team now has just 60 minutes to plan and prep elevated poutine dishes. Load me up, load me up, load me up. Before their stands open for business. Right away, I'm thinking, how delicious would our butter chicken poutine be? Oh, that sounds awesome. I do worry a little bit because, frankly, butter chicken on fries just doesn't sound most appealing to me. I was thinking if we did like a black and Cajun chicken, something sweet with a little bit of heat too, mm -hmm. and then call it like dirty chicks on top. <laughs> no. Having Jennifer on our team concerns me a little. She talks and talks and talks. For fries, though, if we toss them in cornstarch, hey, it'll make them crispy. No. Why don't we go Japanese, like, you know, Japatine, you know what I mean? With the nori, kind of like a ramen base, like Absolutely. a ramen gravy. My poutine is a definite West Coast thing. We have a lot of Japanese influence when it comes down to food. So as soon as I seen those ingredients there, I knew that I wanted to represent the West Coast. Sexy, man, yeah. Potatoes, I'm gonna need a man on potatoes. That's me. Got John's it. our beef Got man, it. right? Yeah. I'm thinking Philly cheesesteaks okay. yeah. with some twerk. So I'm making El Gros Beef, which is a loose translation to the big beef. Poutine being the sinfully dirty thing that it is, should have an equally dirty name. Sabrina is French Canadian. She's gonna be the queen of poutine. And I think the blue team have a really good shot at winning this. Boom! Oh! Oh! One, two, three, right! Chicken, chicken. <laughs> we're making poutine. Girls rule, boys rule, we're gonna kill it today. So this is gonna be a really unique challenge for the simple reason there are three teams competing. One bucket down, guys. What about Sabrina's team? Who has she got in her team that she can really rely on, that's got strength, that can really help pull this off? Is it John? What do you think? It might be fun enough. Some of these are thin. Yeah, yeah, they're good. If they're too thin, don't do it. I think she can rely on herself. I think she has probably what it takes to take the entire team on her own forward. I mean, she knows poutine inside and out. You think she's going to be a great leader? I think she's going to be a fantastic leader. So let's talk about Lynn. This is her second time being captain on a team challenge. As you know, she didn't fare well in the last one. She lost by a landslide. You know what, I like Dave's team. I know Michael has had a few missteps, but he's a very methodical guy. Michael really hasn't shown what he can do at this point in time. What's good about Michael, he's a very good salesman. In this particular competition, it's more important, I think, to sell the Putin. Sabrina. What's up, Chef? I've come to get an update on your poutine dish. Our gravy's coming together, our potatoes are on fire, and we're gonna have some deep-fried jalapenos. Ooh, woo! 
cut plank steak before? Yeah. You know how to do it? Very ridiculous to the grain, yeah. Otherwise? It's tough. Exactly. Yeah. And what color are you expecting on that beef? It's going to be a little pink inside, not too much. As a college kid, we don't want to go too rare with it. Sounds like you got it all together. David! Yes, yeah, Chef. What are you going to do? A Japanese-inspired bacon poutine. What are you going to call it? Bacon japatine. So what's in it? The, of course, the bacon, a uh, pork stock, a sriracha of spicy mayo, nori, and a scallion. Well, look at him go. Hello, hey, chef. Look at him go. You're fast, aren't you? Thank you, Chef. You didn't take the peels off. No, I like it rustic. OK. So you got the bacon here. I mean, the bacon goes lovely with everything. And it's going to impart uh, bacon fat flavor with the fries as well. I think that's a fantastic idea, getting a lot of that bacon fat into the fries. The potato's going to absorb it and give it extra, extra flavor. I wouldn't have picked pork, but in the sound of what you're doing, I couldn't wait to taste this. Thank you, Chef. How's everyone doing here? Excellent. How are you, right. Chef? Good. What are you making? We're making butter chicken poutine with a mango yogurt cilantro coleslaw to put on top. We have a lot of cilantro in here. Yes. Aren't you concerned about how large the cilantro leaves are? They're huge. So Chef Claudio just picks up the sauce and he goes, yeah, this isn't going to work. That's so thick. Look at that. So I should start over then? Uh, the thing is, if you mix this now, it's going to liquefy on you. This sauce is either going to make or break our poutine. I don't have any time to waste, so I trash my sauce because I am not going to lose once again. He's the judge. That yogurt sauce has got to be something special. I know. We need to show the judges we were able to get all the elements as close to perfection as possible. Anything less than the best could set us home. Lynn, how's the sauce going? It's uh, mango yogurt. Well, it looks nice. Mmm. We've got very nice flavor mm -hmm. with the coriander. I can taste that. The acidity, the mango, it's quite nice. I think it's going to be a nice match. Thank you. Good luck. Can I give you a hug? No, you can always give me You guys can do it too, okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, man. I was just loving the love. <laughs> got a lot of steak to chop, but that's what these kids want. This challenge is about selling as much poutine as you possibly can to hungry, starved university kids. So I need to rev up the crowd, and I need to do my very best to charm as many beautiful ladies over to have our steak poutine. OK, there's only one line. That line is going to be blue team. I could sell snow to an igloo dweller. It is uh, a talent I have. Do you guys like steak? Let me show this kid how it's done. I only have to say one word. Fake it! I am the biggest hustler when it comes to this. I know Michael is a smooth talker and Cody is all looks. Hooray for the underdog! I need to distract from them and Cody's good looks and charm. Do you want your food to taste good or do you want it to look good? Oh! We said bacon and they went crazy! Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's make one up. I'll make them taste it. Tammy makes a beautiful dish of butter chicken, puts in, and Jennifer brings it in the crowd, and she's making people smell, telling them to go to the green booth. If you're eating them with your friends, calories don't count. <laughs> Jennifer's big mouth is actually going to help us help puts in. Bodacious butter chicken. Let's hear it. Bodacious butter chicken. Jennifer's Bodacious contribution is actually helping, not hindering like I thought. Woo! Who would have thought? Oh, that's good. You got all the flavor you need in that. 30 seconds! Dump her in. It's 30 seconds! We gotta have a crowd coming for poutine! Okay, ladies, everybody, bring the heat. But we need more gravy. This is not gonna be enough. This one's ready. Students of Guelph, choose your poutine! Come and get it! <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. We need fries, people! Here we go. The students of Guelph University will now choose between the red team's Japanese-inspired poutine with bacon, nori, and miso gravy, the blue team's Philly cheesesteak poutine topped with deep-fried jalapenos, and the green team's butter chicken poutine with fresh cilantro yogurt and mango slaw. The team that sells the most orders will win this challenge. So check this out. This is the big, dirty steak poutine. Who's getting the first one? Ladies first? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. The forks are right here and the napkins are right here. How do you like it? That's delicious. Yeah, man. Yeah. We got bacon, baby. Bacon sells. Everyone loves bacon. Yeah, I love butter chicken. It reminds me of India. Hope you enjoy. Yeah.
It's worth the wait over here. This is the best gravy I've ever tasted in my life. I see the red and blue team's lines, and they're endless. I look over to the green line, and there's like 15 people in there. It's like a two-man race. You got nobody. <laughs> oh, no. Good pick on team captain for Lynn. <laughs> I can overhear the other teams talking that our lineup is very short. What they don't realize is we've already fed them, and those people are coming back for more. Yeah, yeah, by the time that I got my second one from the green team, they got she their still, first. I was still, still in line. line. Yeah. Wow. It's a very short line. Is this your second plate? Yeah, it's delicious. It's incredible. The green team has sold so many orders that they've run out of chicken. Is this all you have left? Yes, we're selling out, Chef. Wow. We're running out of butter chicken, but Tammy decides to make another batch, and she does it in world record speed. Like, I've never seen anybody go boom, 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 and make a butter chicken that fast in the kitchen. There we go. Tammy saves the day. With lengthy lines at both the red and blue team stands, the judges wow. go in to find out what's taking them so long. Quasi, are you moving as fast as possible? Or is this chill out mode? No, no chill mode. OK, you got to hustle. We have a huge line. Quasi's on the fries. Get it together, buddy. I'm pressing these potatoes, and I'm going as fast as I can. Now it's about speed, eh? Getting it out fast, fast, fast. John, you may have to top that beep as well. Keep up the speed, huh? Yeah, yeah. So we need four more. We're getting slammed. There's hundreds of students waiting for poutine, and this is taking a long time to make because of all the components on it. So I see that you've gone for the butter chicken. Yeah. You're liking it? I love it. It has really nice flavor. You taste all the different flavors all mixed into one. Did you taste any others? I tried the steak one. From the blue team? Yes. And how did that fare? It was just like an ordinary poutine with steak. Yeah, I could just make it at home. I didn't think it was really anything special at all. I see that you have got the, bacon, the red team, yeah. the bacon. I'm a fan. I love Japanese food, so it mixed into the poutine is like win-win for me. Now I'm having the red team. Uh, one thing I found, there's no bacon. You didn't get any bacon? No. That is not acceptable. Who didn't get the bacon in the poutine? You didn't get the bacon. We all didn't get bacon. You all didn't get You all come with me. I'll check through them. I'll check. Hang on, guys. Hang on. Dave, they've got one, two, three, four poutines here that do not have bacon. Michael, you've got to do more than just standing, taking the cash. <laughs> no, you can be a supervisor on this. Michael's first priority is to sell bacon to the students. Have you run out? We have not run out of bacon. Are you sure? We have plenty. If Michael doesn't follow that direction, we are not winning this thing. We may be in the pressure test. Michael, you're the last point of quality control. You're totally right. Keep an eye on it, OK? Yes, sir. David, speed cannot compromise quality. And remember, bacon, it's your hero ingredient. Yes, chef. You got it? I got it. Thank okay, you, chef. Back to it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Two minutes! You have two minutes left! How are we looking over there, boys and girls? Running low on gravy. It's gonna be our last couple ones. There you go, my dear. Thank you. Enjoy, my pleasure. Come on, you guys, let's do this. Come on, brother. <laughs> we got him, we got him. Oh. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Feeling good. We've got this thing in the bag. I have to redeem myself from losing the last challenge, so this would mean the world to me. We did good. We did good. That was insane, man. <laughs> With their poutine challenge now over, the home cooks assemble in front of the judges to find out which team sold the most orders. Congratulations, red, blue, and green teams. All three teams did a fantastic job. Your sales were incredibly close, but only one team sold enough poutine to save themselves from the dreaded pressure test. They beat the second place team by a mere seven orders. Wow. Please let it be green, let it be green. To announce that winning team, please welcome the University of Guelph cheerleading squad, the Griffins. We won! Yes! The green team wins. I don't understand what's going on. Is that the right color? It is so awesome to kick everyone else's ass. 
The feeling is I want to put it in a jar and keep it forever. Red and blue teams, you now face the dreaded pressure test that will result in at least one of you going home. Please go and clean up your stations. Yes, sir. What a heartbreak. We worked our butt off. You know, at the end of the day, I don't know how we could have done any better. We fought strong. We did a good job. I don't even know how that's possible. That just doesn't make any sense. Not only do I have to cook in the pressure test, but I have to cook in the pressure test against really good competitors. Someone really good is going to go home. It's the day after the Guelph University Poutine Challenge, and now the red and blue teams are about to face off in a grueling pressure test. We're facing elimination. I can't go home. The pressure I'm feeling is incredible. I lost, and I hate losing. I'm prepared for anything. Welcome back to the MasterChef Canada Kitchen. You all made inventive poutine for hundreds of hungry students at the University of Guelph. Congratulations, green team. You sold the most poutine dishes and are safe from elimination. Well done. Thank you, Thank you Chef. Thank you, Chef. Lynn, what did you learn from this experience? I had more trust in my fellow teammates. I learned that you can actually have fun and still succeed. David. Your team served four poutine dishes without one of the main ingredients, the bacon. You know, I, I, I take responsibility for that because I was just trying to push out poutine and uh, I missed it. Sabrina, you're from Montreal. This must be a very hard challenge to lose. One of the few comments I kept hearing about your poutine is it wasn't inventive enough. We played steak, mushrooms, and onions, which is a knock it out of the park classic. A bit safe, though, isn't it? In retrospect, you're right. One home cook from each team would be safe from elimination. And the decision to save those home cooks will be made by David. And Sabrina. Sabrina. Yes, sir. You face a difficult choice. Do you choose to save yourself or Will you save one of your team members? David and Sabrina have to cook today just to save face because they gave me hell for saving myself last time we had a team challenge. So Sabrina, who are you going to save? It's tough. I was the captain. I made the final decisions. It's on me. I'll hold my own. I couldn't lead a team into failure and then run out like a sneak. I'm not Lynn. I put this guy on my team because I believed in him and he did everything that had to be done. I'm gonna have to say John. John, head upstairs. Yeah, go guys, go guys. Thank you, Sabrina. I don't have to be in the pressure test. Live to fight another day. David, now you have a tough decision to make. I led the team, I'm not going up there unless I win. I'll be saving somebody on my team. This particular individual hasn't had a win yet. He worked equally as hard as everybody else. I'm going to save Michael. Michael, take off your apron and head up to the gallery. I feel great that he picked me. I still feel a little bad that they have to fight for their lives. It's now time to find out the dish that will determine your fate in this competition. It's one of Italy's most popular pastas. And according to legend, its shape was inspired by the navel of Venus, the goddess of love. There's something romantic and beautiful about Italian food. I love Italian food. Handmade tortellini blanketed in a rich, cheesy sauce. I got this, and I'm half Italian. I'm not going to go out on pasta. I've never made tortellini, but I've made pastas before. I think I can do it. The secret to this challenging dish is threefold. First, your fresh pasta must be rolled to the perfect thickness and folded with absolute precision. Second, your customized filling. It must work in harmony with the third most important element, your sauce. Rich and perfectly seasoned with a luscious creamy melt that is culinary bliss. Please head to your stations. Tortellini is refined, it's delicate. There's no way that's happening with these hands. But I'm gonna do my best and I'm gonna make sure my flavors are there. 
There are a lot of great home cooks in the kitchen. I know that I could bring it with tortellini, but well, this is going to be a close one. In front of you, you will find everything you need to make a perfect tortellini dish from scratch. You will also have access to a specialty pantry stocked with cured meat, fresh vegetables, and a touch of Philadelphia shredded cheese. You will have 60 minutes to create a superb tortellini dish. Your time starts now! I've got to make something delicious. My sauce has to be delicious. My pasta's got to be fluffy, airy, and awesome. Big things got to happen in this kitchen for me today. I want to use North African ingredients and Italian ingredients and blend the two together. I'm using raisins, anchovies, accentuated with cheese. I think the innovation will impress the judges. This is pasta, so if they make a mistake in any of the steps, it's elimination. They're done. I'm really concerned. Never made a tortellini. And I have no clue what I'm doing. Sabrina to start her pasta dough immediately. She's gonna knead it right now. She's gonna allow enough time for resting. Oh, she knows what she's doing. <laughs> when you work the pasta dough, what you're really doing is getting that gluten in the flour to come out and it makes it very, very elastic. So then you can roll it out when the time is right. That's ready to rest. I'm gonna prove that I'm a top contender by making a rock and tortellini today. We're gonna do a mushroom, black garlic, pancetta filling. This is love food. It smells good already. I'm making a portobello mushroom anchovy stuffing. I feel really confident. It's a little bit out of the box, but you know what? That's what this competition is all about. Hi there, David. So what kind of tortellini are you doing? Ham and cheese, obviously with the more refined hams. And I see you're working on the sauce. Basic bechamel, but I like to use like a gooey type of cheese. So mozzarella is the perfect type of gooey cheese. Yeah, you are sweating like a, a good one. <laughs> yeah. Is this normally the way you cook, or is, is it just the added pressure? It's the added pressure. Well, I'll uh, leave you to it and look Thank forward you, to Chef. trying them. Thanks very much, David. Christopher, how are you feeling? Nervous. You have shown us that you could do savory, so what do you worry about? There is a lot of very strong cooks today down here in the kitchen, and I don't know if I can match them. Mm -hmm. This is definitely not my strong suit. You can do it to win this. You must have confidence. Okay? Like yes. me, I'm full of it. Confidence. Got it. Thank you, Chef. <sighs> Time is getting serious here. I gotta make some tortellinis and get them in the water. 15 minutes! You better start forming your tortellini. Concrete hands need delicate touch, and I'm not that delicate of a guy, but I'm figuring it out. Oh, that sucks. Cosi is really struggling with his pasta dough. A little bit frazzled in the kitchen. Oh my god. Quasi just threw his pasta dough out. Holy oh, jeez. I threw out the tortellini because I wasn't pleased with the way that it looked. Time is ticking, and I haven't started stuffing my pasta yet. Let's go, Quasi. Stumbling blocks into stepping stones. I kick it into a higher gear and floor it. You got this, Quas? I sure do, baby. And when you're sealing the tortellini, you can use a little egg wash, a splash of water, and sometimes you can do it without any of that. As long as the dough is soft and moist enough, you give it a good crimp pinch, nice it will pinch. not open up. Come on now. Cody, his nerves get to him. It's, it's such a delicate operation, them those shaky hands. Knowing that this tortellini is the deciding factor of whether I stay or whether my MasterChef Canada journey is done, it's nerve wracking. One minute, you have one minute left, come on! I want to see some beautiful tortellini dish in one minute. Come on, guys, last stretch. You can do this. Looking good, you're looking good. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands up! Great job, guys. I'm looking at my tortellini. I wish I could have pushed just a little bit harder, but nothing I can do now. I'm worried there's not enough sauce, and they're gonna call me on it. You've all just had 60 minutes to make us flawless tortellini in a velvety cheese sauce. Let's find out how you did. Andrew, please bring up your tortellini. 
This is a tortellini stuffed with portobello mushroom, anchovy pesto. What's in the sauce? The sauce is a standard Mornay sauce with mozzarella and some garlic. I like the presentation. It's clean. I like clean dishes, but with flavor. Hopefully this delivers. Well, pasta, perfect. Filling, when you were putting those cooked white anchovies, didn't think it would work. You deliver on that too. Only problem is, it was a little bit dry. The reason was you could put more of that creamy cheese sauce. Christopher, please bring up your tortellini. I'm worried that my filling is dry. I'm worried my presentation isn't impressive enough. And I'm feeling really nervous. So the filling is made of pancetta, sausage, portobello, and artichoke hearts. It's been flavored with garlic, onion, and sage. Well, the shape to me looks terrific. Let's see what they look like inside. A good amount of filling? You happy with that? Yes. Well, the pasta's cooked very nicely. The filling, I find a little subtle but an interesting combination of ingredients. This is quite good. Thank you. Wow. How did you achieve such a beautiful, creamy, light cream sauce? I started with a roux. I used a bit of a white wine reduction in it and mixed with cheese. Wow. It's so velvety. You're a pastry guy, right? That's where you're confident? Yeah. I think it's time you begin to be a little more confident in the savory world because you have a beautiful tortellini here. It's very good. Thank you, Chef. Quasi, you're up next, please. Tell me about your dish. In it, you'll find some roasted red peppers, white anchovies. Hmm. Did you run out of filling? No. Nope. There's almost no filling in there. It's a bit funky. A lot of flavors happening. There's peppers, there's anchovies. What else is in here? Mushroom, onion, there's some crushed raisins. Hmm. I'm confused by it. You were struggling to shape your tortellini. The pasta had me, chef. It had me up against the ropes. The pasta dough, not bad. The creamy sauce, I think, is very good. But some of those flavors in the fillings, a little tough to get one's head around. David, please bring your tortellini up here. I call it ham and cheese. There's pancetta, cottuccino, and a little bit of mortadella. Wow. That definitely tastes like a ham and cheese sandwich. This is Master Chef Canada. It's ham and cheese. There's no spice, no herbs. It lacks excitement. My tortellini's not as good as I thought. It could be me going home. David. There are a couple of things that I think you have gone astray on. The filling, it's very big in the mortadella end of things, which is a very rich meat. You know, at this stage of the game, I want to see elevated flavors. If this dish ends up sending you home, will you have regrets with the decision you made not to be safe up in the gallery? No. Let's hope it doesn't send you home. Cody, please bring your dish up to the front. So this is a tortellini that is stuffed with pancetta, a trio of mushrooms that also has chives in there. Love the plate that you've chosen. Ideal for such a pasta dish. These are quite small. Yes, sir. They're a little smaller than a typical size tortellini. You've cooked the tortellini perfectly. Filling is flavorful. 
What's the flavoring in the sauce? Black garlic, sherry, and shallots. It could be a little bit more acidic. A little more white wine to just help clean the flavors. But all in all, not bad. OK, thank you. Sabrina, please bring up your dish. I kept it classic, but I kept it delicious. I'm confident putting this dish in front of the judges. My tortellini is stuffed with Italian sausage and broccoli. I cooked out some shallots and garlic. Beautiful shaped tortellini here. I'm not surprised, though, because we've seen you with pasta before. And I hold you to a very high standard when it comes to pasta. This is good, but I know you could do better. You know, Sabrina, you're a go-getter, but I think you need to push harder. What's holding you back? Just used to a certain comfort. Are you scared of failure? I am scared to push. You should reach higher. This just got real, and it got real up here. You want me to bring it, I'm bringing it. You want me to cook, I'll cook. Everybody, please come up to the front. We gave you 60 minutes to create a stunning tortellini dish. And while some of you surprised us with gorgeous flavor combinations, others surprised us by playing it safe. Christopher, please step forward. Well, I have to tell you, your dish was the best tortellini of the night. Good job, buddy. Please join the other home cooks in the gallery. Thank you, chef. Great job. Way to go, Christopher. At the end of the day, he's running this competition. Cody, Sabrina, Andrew, please step forward. Unlike Christopher, your dishes were not great. But tonight, it's good enough to win you another day in the MasterChef Canada kitchen. Head on up to the gallery. Good luck, guys. <sighs> I'm feeling very grateful to just barely squeak by. Quasi, you tried to bring several cultures together, but ultimately, the flavors got lost in translation. David, you've dazzled us with pasta before, but your ham and cheese tortellini did not give us what we expect from you. Your place here in the Master Chef kitchen is only as assured as your latest dish. It's very hard to lose home cooks that we like and respect. But unfortunately, at least one of you has to go home tonight. David, please take off your apron. Head up to the gallery. You're safe. Well, the judges are telling me to step it up, and I'm paying attention, baby. I gotta step it up, because that's not gonna happen again. Quasi, you told us that your dream was to inspire people and to become a food superhero. Still is, chef. Well, in this competition, you have displayed those qualities of a superhero. Unwavering fairness and positive action. Thank you, chef. Your warmth and generosity will be missed here. This experience has been absolutely amazing. An absolute pleasure. Yeah. Thank you, Chef. Well done. And I want a superhero hug. I loved your food. I thought it was amazing. Do big guys come in here and get emotional? Come on up here and get your apron. Oh! This competition has really given me the push and made me feel like I can really accomplish things with food. All day up in my kitchen, baby. All day. My food dreams have just started. The sky really is the limit. And I'm up, 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 and away. Next time on MasterChef Canada. Surprise! A birthday mystery box takes the cake. Michael's cake is bluer than your hair. Nothing is bluer than my hair. And an elimination challenge that demands creativity. What the hell? pushes the home cooks to their limits. You think you're being a little hard on yourself? My heart is breaking.